Now, in order to understand Bleeding Kansas, we have to understand the uh, things that happened before Bleeding Kansas, the Kansas-Nebraska Act, Voting Kansas, the whole voting uh, debacle, and then how things eventually happened. Now, in 1854, uh, legislation in Congress threatens to erupt basically most of the country into war. Um, the Kansas-Nebraska Act winds up being the final death blow to the Whig Party. It winds up dividing the Democratic Party, and it winds up creating the Republican Party. It was created by Stephen Douglas. Stephen Douglas had pushed through a compromise, and then he swore to never make a speech about slavery again. He can't take his own advice. So he proposes that the area west of Iowa and Missouri, which at the time was a permanent Indian reservation, no longer a permanent Indian reservation, of course, be opened up to white settlers. It creates two territories, Kansas and Nebraska. Uh, Missouri Compromise at that point was declared inoperative and void. So why would people do this? Why would Stephen Douglas actually choose to do this? Some people think he was seeking the presidency, which is a possibility because he does go on to seek the presidency. Uh, other people thought he was trying to make the um, sh make Chicago a hub for the Transcontinental Railway. And he also believed that, too, that the, uh, the idea of uh, popular sovereignty and uh, development of the West. So popular sovereignty is the idea of people being able to pick for themselves what their state is going to be, whether it's free or slave or anything like that. So uh, there's also competition with the South, too, or that the South, but some of the more Southern uh, areas, because the Transcontinental Railway on the South had already been completed. Um, by the Gadsden Purchase, which gives us that little tiny bit of um, New Mexico and Arizona uh, that we have left on the map here in uh, 1853. And then you also have the pressure from Missouri slave uh, owners, too, because Missouri was a slave state that didn't want to be surrounded by free states, and they had free states all around them, uh, except for the uh, territories that were at the time slave states. So you have... Um, <clears throat> A lot of Northern Democrats with some free soil sentiments uh, start repudiating their own party, They, especially Douglas himself. You get um, Northern Democratic um, representatives, if they vote for this Kansas-Nebraska Act, um, <clears throat> are voted out of office uh, at a rate of about 44 to 51. Then you get the Republican Party starts to form. It's a combination of anti-slavery radicals, old-line Whig Party people, uh, people who were former Jacksonian Democrats, um, people who were disaffected Democrats, people who want to bar slavery from Western territories, people like William Seward of New York, who eventually goes on to become Secretary of State, Salmon P. Chase, uh, Lincoln, those are people who favored colonization. William Seward was one of the people who actually thought that uh, black people should get uh, civil rights and the right to vote and absolutely everything. But most of the time, the chief issue was about keeping the West free from slavery. So both pro and anti-slavery people compete to win for their section. You get the North uh, competing for anti-slavery mainly. Um, but even before um, the Kansas-Nebraska Act, you get a, an actual organization of efforts by abolitionists are moving to Kansas permanently to vote to make it free. So by the summer of 1855, 9,000 abolitionists had actually settled in Kansas. Missouri slave owners, are, uh, slave owners are afraid that Kansas is going to be a haven for runaway slaves. And one lawyer tells a chain crowd that he would hang any free soil emigrant uh, to um, Kansas. On May 30th of 1855 is when territorial elections are held. 1,500 men are registered to vote. 6,000 votes are cast. So you want to talk about some voting irregularities there. Um, mainly because a lot of people just crossed the border from Missouri, went over, cast a vote, then went back home. So those 9,000 people that had moved into Kansas that were actually living there uh, were largely outnumbered in the votes by the people who crossed the border uh, into Kansas from Missouri. So a pro-slavery legislature is elected. Uh, they stipulate that only pro-slavery men could hold office. They also give you a five-year prison sentence for anyone who questions the legality of slavery in Kansas. The Free Soils are actually hold their own convention and draw up their own anti-slavery constitution. Uh, it also bars free African Americans and uh, it aims to keep Kansas free and white. So they submit that to the voters, the ones who are still in Kansas. 
uh, who approve it, then they send it to Congress, and then Franklin Pierce uh, has a choice to make. He has two different um, constitutions for Kansas in his hand, and uh, he picks the pro-slavery legislature. So he actually got to pick between the uh, two that he wanted. So on May 21st of 1856, you get pro-slavery men from Missouri that go into Kansas and they start arresting the legislatures, the people of this counter-government, the ones that um, were declared uh, illegal by Franklin Pierce. They burn the local hotel, they start looting homes, they destroy the printing presses. One person is killed. And a um, man later says that, gentlemen, this is the happiest day of my life. I determined to make the fanatics bow before me in the dust and kiss the territorial laws, and I have done it by God. But then things get much, much worse. 